Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is gonna be my monthly reading wrap up for April. I think I had a good reading month, way better than March, I will say. I feel like March, I was kind of in a slump and I was trying to get out of it. So April was better. I don't have a lot of the physical copies because April was one of those months where I kind of just, I was too lazy to hold a book. Do you ever like feel that way? That you just read on your Kindle because you're too lazy to hold a book? So yeah. A lot of the books that I'm going to talk about are either from my Kindle and then there are two audiobooks. So the first book that I read in April is The Right Move by Liz Tom Ford and I actually read this last year I think for the first time. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's when it came out. And I reread it because I needed a comfort read. So clearly it's something that I like. I reread it. And the reason that I needed a comfort read is because the last book that I read in March was A Little Life <laughs> and so I just needed something comfortable and happy to read. It's basically a romance about this girl who breaks up with her boyfriend and so her life is kind of turned upside down because of it and she doesn't have a place to live so she moves into her best friend's brother's apartment and then obviously we know what happens from there. It's best friend's brother, it's a basketball romance. Honestly one of like the cutest books that I've ever read but what I will say is that it's the second book in a series I don't even know what the series- oh it's called the Windy City series but the first book is really really bad so even though I'm recommending this one I don't recommend the first one you don't have to read the first one literally skip that one because it's really bad but this one's really good and so cute and the two main characters are great so this is a fun one I gave this one 4.5 stars the first time I read it I gave it a 4 because I was only on Goodreads and I didn't have like 0.5 stars and now that I use Storygraph 4.5 the second book that I read is My Sister the Serial Killer. Basically this book is about two sisters and one of them is like more conventionally attractive and the other one isn't and the one that's more attractive like dates a lot and the guys that she dates they keep showing up dead so when the other sister realizes that she's good, she's starting to date someone that she works with that she actually likes she gets nervous because her boyfriends keep showing up dead and yeah it, the story kind of just unfolds I really enjoyed this the only thing I would say it was actually too short I'm pretty sure it's like 223 pages I feel like with a hundred more pages this could have been really good like the story could have unraveled more and gotten so much better but I still really really enjoyed it I loved the short chapters it held my attention it was a good plot a good storyline as I said it could have just developed more and so I gave this four stars Another book that I read on my Kindle was Wild Love by Elsie Silver. I have said so many times how much I don't really enjoy the Chestnut Spring series and so I kind of wanted to try another series <laughs> from Elsie Silver to see if I would enjoy it and I did enjoy this one more. Wild Love is about this girl who her life also kind of blows up and stuff happened with her job so she leaves the place that she's living to go back home and the male main character is like one of her childhood frenemies like they're friends but they would always like be playful enemies and so they're obviously back in the same city and the male main character is also going through a situation <laughs> because he's a new dad and he's a single dad so yeah those are all the tropes basically i don't want to give too much away i never want to give too much away but that's basically what it is. Honestly, I feel like within this book, not that much happens, but it's still really cute and wholesome. And I feel like at the time, it's kind of just what I needed, something like quick and fun. But I will say that there was a third act breakup that was pretty stupid. I can't even lie. And it came so late in the book. I'm like, this should be called a fourth act breakup because why? <laughs> also, the male main character is a billionaire. And I feel like I'm at the point where these romance books that are about billionaires is so like insane to me because how many billionaires are there like how is it really that easy to just come across a billionaire am i gonna go back to my hometown and one of my closest childhood friends just a billionaire like it's so unserious <laughs> and i rated why well, love 4.5 stars the next book i actually listened to on spotify like audiobooks it's called a happy couple and I really enjoyed listening to this book. One, it was like so short, it went by so quickly, but it felt like almost like a gossip 
kind of podcast thing. Basically, it's about this couple that's about to get married and it's just all of the days leading up to the wedding and it's like split into parts. Like the bride has a part and the groom has a part and the bridesmaid, which is the bride's sister, has a part and also the... is it called a groomsman? <laughs> yeah, he has a part too and he is also the ex of the groom so it's just like a whole messy story and I found it to be really interesting especially to listen to this is one of those books that has a lot of unlikable characters which I know people don't love I like it it feels realistic and it's just like who do you root for no one but at the same time like <laughs> it's just so interesting to read about and I seriously just loved all of the drama so I would recommend it and I would specifically recommend the audiobook but I do remember there were a few one-liners that I was like I kind of really want to get this book so I can reread it and also just underline a lot of things honestly I think usually when I listen to an audiobook I tell myself like I know if I would prefer it as an audiobook or if I would have preferred to read the physical copy and this is one of those books that I don't know I think I would enjoy both and I would buy it to reread it because I really did have a good time. And honestly, the only reason that I listened to this instead of buying it is because the hardcover is like $30 and it's like 200 and something pages. I just feel like it's a little ridiculous. So I just listened to it for free. <laughs> the Happy Couple for me was a 4.75 stars. I keep seeing people say like it's for fans of Sally Rooney, which I am. Usually when books say that, it's kind of like, I don't know about that. But this one, for sure, I would agree. It was such a good time. Long Shot, I don't know if it's called The Long Shot or Long Shot by Kennedy Ryan. So basically this is a book about, how do I explain this one without giving too much away? It's about basketball players. And there's this one girl, I genuinely could not describe this one without giving too much away. I specifically remember the first chapter not knowing like literally anything and it was amazing to just go into that blind so I, I'm not gonna give anything away the only thing I will say is check the trigger warnings other than that this one wasn't the best for me I rated it 3.5 stars which really isn't bad it was still like interesting to read and there was a lot of moments of like drawing awareness to domestic violence but at the same time that's not enjoyable obviously so it was, it was kind of a hard thing to rate i feel like there's some good life lessons in there and i also really enjoyed the ending one thing i will say about kennedy ryan is every time i finish one of her books i constantly like think about the characters i don't know what it is like even though i didn't like this one as much i was like always thinking about the characters in the world that i just left so kennedy ryan she does write a good like character and a good world also the evil person in this book is named caleb and if you know Caleb from A Little Life, they basically do the same thing in both of these books. And I think if I met someone in real life named Caleb, I would actually run away screaming. Anyway, so yeah, The Long Shot by Kennedy Ryan, 3.5 stars. Expiration Dates by Rebecca Searle. This one was complicated for me. Basically, this is about a woman who gets these little notes randomly in her life. And it would say a man's name and then an amount of like time like it would say sean 10 days and that amount of time is how long she's gonna date sean for and this sounded so interesting to me in theory but then basically what it is is that she gets a note one day with a name and it doesn't have a um it doesn't have a time on it so she thinks that this is the guy that she's meant to be with for life and so it kind of just follows them for the f most of the book it kind of just follows them but it also kind of flashes back to like the other dates that she would go on or well the other people she would be in relationships with with for the notes that she got but I just found most of this so 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 boring and then also like her whole relationship with the forever guy was so 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 boring but then we get to a point this is a really short book it's like 200 and something pages like 250 and then we get to a point where something huge happens and it's like oh that's the point of the book but that thing that happens it's like really good and it really did evoke emotion and then everything after that the book was just really really good after that and so that's why it's so hard for me to rate because it's like 
I was left feeling very good and satisfied and like wow this is such a good book but then I have to sit and remember the first like hundred and something pages I was bored out of my mind and then there's also this thing this is a personal problem this is a very personal problem but there's this thing that the author does in this book where she like romanticizes Los Angeles and I don't love Los Angeles <laughs> and I feel like in books like the seven year slip where the author romanticizes New York I'm like yeah like I can relate to that and I love that so much and it just I don't know maybe living here it makes me feel so immersed into the book and she was doing that for Los Angeles I'm like I literally don't care about Los Angeles restaurants and their their style I don't care like I just don't care I don't care about the farmer's market and whatever I don't care about the Grove like how do you romanticize the Grove I'm sorry this is my personal beef with Los Angeles <laughs> so yeah a lot of that I just didn't care about if you're someone who loves Los Angeles honestly you would really enjoy this and at the same time I feel like I can't rate the book based on that because like that doesn't make it a bad book that's just my own personal problem <laughs> so overall I decided to give this four stars because once again the point of the book was amazing the ending of the book was amazing and I can't fault her for my own issues with Los Angeles so I would seriously still recommend this to like a lot of people but I did have my issues with it I feel like it would have stayed at like a 3.75 if I didn't love the ending and the plot twist that much, but I did, I did, so I gotta give it its flowers. The next audiobook that I listened to on Spotify was Pineapple Street, and that one is basically just following um, these three sisters that are like really rich and they live on Pineapple Street in like the Cobble Hill area in um, Brooklyn. And it's one of those books that's like no plot just vibes and I know a lot of people hate those. I personally kind of love those. It's more so of like a character study than focused on the plot and it really just follows their lives. I feel like it was such a big plus to listen to it as an audiobook. One of the voices that they kept making sounded so much like Paris Hilton to me because I, I've listened to Paris Hilton's audiobook and I'm like she sounds she kind of sounds like this. <laughs> There's also a little part where something kind of insane happens. I wouldn't call it a plot twist it's just something that like happens and I was like um excuse me what? I think that's as big as like a plot that you're gonna get. I rated this five stars. I enjoyed it that much and I actually do want to buy this book physically too and reread it. I think I would recommend listening to it more than reading the physical copy. When I think about what I would enjoy more, I really do think the audiobook really does hit different. So yeah, again, five stars for Pineapple Street. It's by Jenny Jackson, I think. And then I read Powerless by Lauren Roberts. I am so happy to finally be in the know when it comes to this book. I have felt so much FOMO every time someone talks about this. I'm like, I don't know what people are saying, but now I know and I'm happy about that. So basically when I started this book, I loved it so much. I was like really into it and I was really into like Kai and everything, but I feel like it kind of just had a slow decline for me. Like there were parts that kind of got boring and I feel like a lot of their conversations were really repetitive. Like every time they spoke to each other, they were saying the same thing, which just felt like, okay, now do something. <laughs> as much as I can say that I was kind of disappointed by this, I would definitely continue the series. It, it wasn't like, it's not bad at all. I think I definitely just, I've been listening to the hype for like a whole year. And so I expected this to be like a six star read for me, like the best thing ever. And it was just okay, which was fine. The ending was really good. I really enjoyed the ending. And it also just had its really good moments in between too. But as I said, like it also had its boring moments, which I really didn't expect. And it makes me think like maybe it could have been shorter. <laughs> it also ended on a very good cliffhanger. So yeah, I definitely will be continuing it. But it definitely didn't live up to the hype that I thought it would. You know what I mean? I rated this 3.75 stars, which is still pretty good. I just... The last book that I read and my most anticipated read for the entire year, like now that I've read this, what now? <laughs> Funny Story by Emily Henry. <laughs> I'm not kidding, just getting to the first page and like seeing her usual font that she always uses 
is such a comforting feeling. I felt like I was coming home. <laughs> Not to be dramatic, but getting a new like Emily Henry book every year since Beach Read has just been the highlight of my year. I honestly feel so bad for people who don't enjoy Emily Henry like this yearly thing that we have going on. I'm so sorry that you can't understand this. Also this one was released on my birthday so seriously best birthday ever. So basically this book is about a girl who gets broken up with very close to the time that she's meant to get married and yeah everything just like shit just hits the fan. <laughs> I'm not going to say any more because I never read the description of this book because when it comes to Emily Henry, add to cart. I don't care what the description of the book is. I don't care what the trope is. I, it doesn't matter. It could be my least favorite trope ever. I will still read it because it's Emily Henry. And so I had no idea what this book even was about. And after like I got into it and I was like, whoa, this is what what's happening. Because literally within the first chapter, all of this, like her getting left so close to her wedding like all of that was unraveling i'm like i'm not used to so much drama happening in like the first chapter of emily henry's books and i was like whoa and i literally like read the first paragraph of the description and it's in there so if you read it you would know that but i didn't know that <laughs> and as i said i'm so used to emily henry's books the first like three chapters are always so like slow and it's not in a bad way it's just kind of more just descriptive and nothing usually happens yet and I'm completely fine with that but with this one that's not the case like stuff started happening she just got to it and I was like okay one of my favorite things about Emily Henry's books is how important other characters are to the main characters like their friends and their family and whatnot and I feel like one of my biggest things with romance books sometimes is how much the two main characters are just in their own bubble and it's like do you not have a friend do you not call your mother do you not like have parents cousins that you talk to or anything there it's just the two of them in every scene and it's just like this doesn't feel realistic at all and that will never be the case with emily henry's books and i thought that this one would be because it's kind of like a forced proximity thing because the two main characters they end up living in the same apartment and so I thought they were really just going to be in that bubble, but that is not the case. Other people get involved and it still has that aspect that I really love about Emily Henry's books. And then another thing that I love about Emily Henry's books is that the characters always have these like insecurities and they're always vulnerable with each other. She really just hit the mark every time with everything that we love about her books, the cozy like beach feeling. When I was like three quarters into this book, I got so mad at myself. I'm like, I almost finished this and I already want to reread it and I wish I like savored it. I wish I didn't read it so quickly. I'm like, it's gonna end soon and I was so sad about it. Honestly, as soon as I closed it, I was like, should I read it again? Just to see. <laughs> like, should I just read it again? There's so many songs from the Tortured Poets Department. There's so many songs from that album. That I feel like suits this book and I'm like that is so insane like does Emily Henry and Taylor Swift know each other and are they like let's just release all of this at once and ruin their lives. <laughs> the Prophecy, The Bolter, So High School and I Hate It Here I feel like all of those they work so well with this book so but I specifically couldn't stop listening to The Prophecy. It like suits Daphne so well in the things that she's going through. Anyway, if it isn't obvious, this is a five star for me. Like all of the other Emily Henry books, except for People Meet on Vacation, that one I read at two stars and I honestly, it's okay. She's allowed to have one fluke. <laughs> I think low-key everyone does have one Emily Henry book that they don't love as much as the others. And I know for a lot of people it's book lovers, which breaks my heart because I love book lovers so, so much. Yeah, for me, it's people who meet on vacation. And so my Emily Henry ranking, Beach Read, always, Happy Place, and then this, and then book lovers. Even though I just said like how much I love book lovers, it's just, they're all so good. And they're all almost on the same level, but if I had to rank them, Beach Read, Happy Place, Funny Story, Book Lovers, and then People Who Meet On Vacation isn't even on in the same room, like, <laughs> no. Sorry for my rant about Funny Story, but I, I can't help myself. 
I am an Emily Henry fan until I die. So these are the nine books that I read this month. It was a really fun reading month and I hope that I continue to have reading months like this. <sighs> Although I don't think any reading month will live up to a month where Emily Henry releases a book, so but we'll try. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more videos. Bye!